No, I haven't seen the picture. I forgot to turn it on, Bob. You just got to turn it on. Go ahead and start. I'll edit this out. You'll edit it out? You want me to start? Yep, go ahead. Okay, uh, this is called uh, Athens Speak Out, number 388, and the title is A Postmortem on the 8th of November Election Results, One Week Late. And Steve Antle is the moderator, and he will keep both Dave DeWitt from the Athens News and myself as a retired historian to two minutes and then we'll switch it over to the other side. And we really have two questions. Why uh, did Trump win and why did Hillary lose? Okay, you ready, David? Yes. Uh, do you have the latest uh, polling results from the 8th of November? I do, yes. Um, so as it stands now, and these results are incomplete as absentee ballots are still being counted, um, so this is just how they stand right now as of today, Tuesday, November 15th. And that is uh, Donald Trump, the Republican nominee, is the uh, president-elect, the winner with a projected 306 electoral votes. That's well over the 270 needed to uh, win the election compared to 232 electoral votes for Democrat Hillary Clinton. Uh, it looks like right now, at least, that Donald Trump has carried 30 states plus Maine's 2nd Congressional District. Well, Hillary Clinton has taken 20 states plus Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. The popular vote, as it stands right now, uh, Hillary Clinton is leading in that. She's got 61,324,576 votes in the popular count, while Donald Trump has 60 million. 526,852. Now those numbers are going to adjust a little bit as these absentee votes are counted. Uh, there might be a recount in states like Michigan that are extremely close, um, but the result of the election is that Donald Trump is the president-elect and that is not going to change uh, with regard to the results. Okay, Robert, uh, you want to go with... Uh, I'll ha uh, uh, Dave's uh, statistics are better than mine. Mine are two days out of date. But I could add... Well, you had 306 and 232, and you probably got 290 and... Yeah, two, yeah. You, what was it, 306? 306 yeah. and 232. And, and 30 states. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, 30 states yeah. to 20 All right. plus Okay, DC. and then Hillary got eight, how many states? 20 plus D.C., the states, though. How many states? States. Tw oh, 20. Yeah. yeah. 20 plus, plus DC. DC. Yeah, okay. And, and it was, how many, how many, what's the electoral vote? Uh, 306 for Trump and 232 for Hillary. As it's 332, I had that same figure. 232. Yeah. yeah. 332. Okay. 232. 232. Yeah. yeah, that's what you have. That's what I had. 232. Okay. Now, the only thing I would have to add, uh, was that Johnson, a third party candidate, got about four million votes, three percent of the vote, and Stein, Jill, uh, Jill Stein, got a million votes, one percent of the vote. So the third parties didn't have much influence on the total outcome. And the conclusion I have is that this is not enough for Hillary to contest the election like the Gore Bush election of 2000. So the popular vote for Hillary is just a personal endorsement for her feminist campaign. Now, I have some statistics on the races for the Senate. Do you have those, some of those? Uh, the last time I checked, it looked like the Democrats were going to pick up two Senate seats. Is that what you have? I have that the total is uh, 51 okay, senators for the Republicans, and the Democrats now have 48 senators, and okay. there are 30 we're not up for a re-election. Right. And the Democrats are now 15 governors and 33 governors for the Republicans. So the uh, Republicans are very strong on the governors. And the Democrats uh, seem... Robert, if I may correct you, I think it's 33 for the Republicans. That's what I said. Right, yeah. That's what Did you said. say 33? I said 33. Seven, 17. 17, I got that 17 wrong. for the Democrats. Okay. And then the Democrats picked up, what, one governor? 
Democrats picked up one yeah, governor. Yeah, I believe one governorship. And the House of Representatives, the Republicans have 239, the Democrats have 192, and the Republicans lost six seats in the House, and the Democrats gained six seats. Yeah. yeah. That's square now, with your statistics? Yeah. Now, Robert, I, as long as you're a historian, I'd like to know this. Only four times in our nation's history has the electorate... Uh, or, you know, someone else got the popular vote and, and, and the other party won the electric vote. Right. Uh, that happened between Bush and Gore. Right. And Cleveland, or uh, what Rutherford. was his name? Hayes and, Hayes and Tilden. Hayes and Tilden. 17, 18, Grover, Grover Cleveland and... No, no, Grover Cleveland was no, no contest. Was John Quincy Adams was the other one, right? No, John Quincy Adams was a tie. Oh, I see. And it was in the House of Representatives. But I'm sure the electoral vote was tie, seven to seven, or something like that. Okay. And if when it's tie, it goes to the House of Representatives. Yeah. And the House of Representatives tilted toward John Quincy Adams because the senator from Kentucky, namely Henry Clay, threw his vote to Quincy Adams, and that's how Quincy Adams got elected. Yeah. And then Jackson, in revenge, came back in 1824. Uh, 1828, 1828 and, yeah. and smashed uh, John Quincy Adams because he couldn't get any more popular vote. Yeah. So the popular vote becomes decisive in the second Jackson victory. Mm -hmm. But that was a. But in 1828, that was the the that founding was of the Democratic Party. A second Democratic. The first was Thomas Jefferson's Democratic Party. Okay. Then we have a second Democratic Party, and they call it the Jefferson Jackson. Okay. And they have a Jefferson Jackson uh, dinner. Okay. And the Republicans have just a Lincoln dinner. Okay. So there are two Democratic Jefferson and Jackson are two kinds of Democrat because uh, Jackson had the popular vote. That's okay. his contribution. Why, why did I think Grover Cleveland? I always think Grover Cleveland had some problems because he was in the Depression, uh -huh. okay? And he got elected, and he had some problems with alcohol and adultery. Oh, okay, okay. He had had a, an adulterous affair when he was a uh, mayor of, of, uh, of uh, Buffalo. Okay. And the Republicans denounced Cleveland. Okay. Rum, uh, rum, uh, Romanism, and, and okay. sex. But the voters still voted for Cleveland, and yeah. Cleveland won. Yeah. And this was a kind of a, an anti-Puritan vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but then Cleveland immediately lost because they went into a depression, and McKinley then made a comeback. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so, so we, got, got, we got that straight now. Yeah, we got it straight. <laughs> Good. So the four times are 2016, 2000, 1876, and 1824? 1828. Right? 28. 28, okay. Yeah, but that wasn't an electoral college. That was a tie. Right. That, yeah. There was no popular vote then. Right. The popular vote was invented in 1828. Gotcha. Because the states, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, put through the popular vote, and Massachusetts and New York refused to allow the popular vote, but that led to the suicide of the Federalist Party because the Democrats kept winning and winning and winning, and then when the Federalists committed suicide, uh, they created a new opposition party called the Whigs. Yeah. And in, a, the ninth president, William Henry Harrison, was the first Whig to get elected. Typical new and Tyler too. Yeah, but he only lasted six weeks because they got pneumonia. After giving <laughs> you know the what? longest inauguration. He in stood history. there in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I remember, I stood there in the rain and caught pneumonia. Yeah, yeah, so the Democratic Party became the dominant party Yeah. until the Civil War. And then that was the birth of the Republican Party. Right. Although when Jefferson was running, they used to call it the Democratic Republican Party. And then Jefferson gradually, see, democracy was a dirty word. When he died, Jefferson was just a Democrat, and they dropped the Republican. So then Lincoln revived the name Republican in 1860. Yeah. 
or 1850s. Actually, 54 is when yeah, it was Yeah, actually, formed. well, yeah. it was founded twice. Yeah. Once in Michigan and once in Wisconsin. And there's a little bit of fight between two towns. Where was the first Republican Party? Ripon, Wisconsin is one claim. And I think it's Jackson, Michigan is, Michigan is the other claim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Small, very small town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Anyway. That's, that's where our friend Ted Nugent's from, Jackson, yeah. Michigan. Okay, well, anyway, that's the history of the complex electoral popular vote controversy. Yeah. So, um... What's the next question? Sir. Uh, what is the next question? Uh, I think it's uh, to Dave DeWitt, why did Trump win? Yeah. Why did Trump win? Um, okay. So, I... I'm going to save the second part of my answer, which is related to okay. how or why Trump won for the next question, but which is why did Hillary lose? But for now, why did Trump win? I'm going to lay this one at the feet of a group of voters that showed up in record numbers and gave Donald Trump more votes than they've ever given any Republican nominee before, and that is white evangelical voters. They showed up more than they ever have before. Their margin was greater than it's ever been before, and they voted for Donald Trump 81%. They supported Donald Trump 81% to 16% support for Clinton. And I think this, this unprecedented showing of support uh, for Donald Trump is directly related to uh, the death of Antonin Scalia last year, control over the Supreme Court, and Donald Trump's promise to appoint Scalia-like justices to the Supreme Court. They're playing a long game. They're well-informed voters. They knew what was at stake in this election. They knew that the Supreme Court and decades into the future of American law was at stake. And they showed up and they voted. And they voted for Donald Trump, even though he is not the most Christian candidate that we've ever seen put forth from either party. He's a self-declared Presbyterian who doesn't attend church. He's twice divorced. He boasts of his infidelity. He insults just about everybody uh, and seemingly has boundless taste for avar avarice and opulence. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, Greed, he, greed. <laughs> avarice is a kind of an academic word. <laughs> yeah, greed and opulence. All right. W grieve and, uh, grieve and what? Greed and opulence, then. I, opulence. I don't want to get an opulence. Yeah. Do you Have mean you seen? fatness? Oh, he doesn't like fat women. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to his gold-plated... Uh, oh, his gold-plated... Oh, wealth. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I think that they really put him over the top. I think there was an enthusiasm gap, and they knew what was at stake, and they showed up and voted in record numbers for him, and that's what put him over the top. Well, I would agree with that, that the so-called evangelical vote is badly misinformed. Well, yeah, and this is the second part of it. I mean, it's because... <laughs> Donald Trump is only a nominal Christian, really. He doesn't attend church. He calls himself right. a Presbyterian. And meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, for all of her faults, she is a lifelong church-going Methodist right. uh, who often invoked throughout the campaign her denomination's credo to do all the good that you can by all the means that you can at right. all the times you can to all the people that you can as long as you can. And it's so it's irony writ large, in fact, that... The, the white evangelicals came in and essentially, in their minds, won the culture wars with the buzzer beater of all time here okay. um, by electing somebody who is very nominally Christian. I'm going to ask Robert that same question. Why, why do you think, uh, by the way, before we go on, I just wanted to mention uh, to you, David, uh, that's pretty much, I listen to a lot of talk radio from all over the country, and that's pretty much what they're saying. Uh, what you just said. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't listen to that. But you know, I'm not but surprised. they they would ag agree with with what you just said. And uh, I one thing that I remember one uh, listening to one Christian radio station, which is right here in Athens, um, that the lesser of two evils is. Still, Still evil, evil yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That was a statement made. So, Robert, why, why do you think? Uh, well, I agree with everything one. that's been said about evangelicals. Uh, they are badly informed, and uh, I had a Christian upbringing by a very conservative Methodist. And in order to be a good Christian, you at least have to read 
the Sermon on the Mount and the Ten Commandments, and a better Christian would read the whole New Testament. Now, unfortunately, the Christian religion has been declining at the grassroots because from, see, we, Christianity peaked with uh, uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt won the Democratic vote and the Christian vote. He was a good, loyal Episcopalian. And he appealed to the Catholics, the Protestants, and the Jews, and he got a complete coalition. Well... And nobody's done that since? Nobody can and nobody will. Okay. Because Christianity is dying at the grassroots because I had a dean who came here. And I, I, no, she wasn't a dean. She was a vice president. And I had to give her a tour of the campus. Watch your microphone. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. And she asked me about the question, well, I heard that uh, Ohio University is a very liberal campus. And uh, what do you think of uh, uh, the new left? And I said, well, the first thing you have to distinguish is a difference between a liberal, which is a political concept, and hedonism. <laughs> Hedonism is sex, 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 sex. And the American public, by television, is obsessed with sex. And that is the thesis of John <clears throat> Burnham. Right. It's drugs, sex, and he's rock got and six, roll. He's got six, six so-called bad habits. And sexual misbehavior is one of them. Right. But alcoholism is another. Right. And drug taking is a third. Right. So... Uh, the Christian religion is committing suicide. Okay, and but I change the subject a little bit. Well, you Trump, have some other reasons why. You yeah, uh, one too, Trump right? received more money from the Republican National Committee and Wall Street than any outsider woman, such as Hillary. Trump obtained more votes from the white males the unemployed, the part-time workers living in the Rust Belt, living in small cities, decaying rural communities in the United States, and 70% of the voters are white. Hillary Clinton can't count. Trump won 58% of the white vote. 53% of the white males, ages 45, to 64 years, and Trump won 67% of the whites without college education. Hillary Clinton was talking to an elite group of college-educated women, like my wife. But they don't have the majority of votes. It's the votes that count. <laughs> anyway, 50% of the suburban, uh, uh, Trump got 50% of the suburban vote. Trump won in Pennsylvania. They were counting on the suburban vote. That was a misreading of, of, of voters. Now, Robert, I'm going to ask you real quick, uh, and then we'll let David take over. Um, you were talking about the amount of money that uh, Donald Trump received. Um, what I would be more concerned about with was, was the, the amount of money spent. That's the total. The total is up in the billions. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is how much did Trump spend versus how much did Clinton spend? We don't spend? have any statistics on that. Yeah, but the there PACs, will be. There the will be. The yeah. PACs keep that secret. Yeah. That's the importance of Citizens yeah. United. And I have a campaign button, which I don't have on now. Okay. <laughs> but it is. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go over here. David, uh, why, do you, why do you suppose Hillary Clinton lost? Well... I have a two-part answer to this. Okay. Uh, the first is that it was. I think it was clear at this time last year, I think it was clear very early in this election cycle, even before 2016 started, that this was going to be an anti-establishment year. I think that we saw that with the rise of Trump in the Republican Party with his conservative brand of populism. I think that we saw that on the left with Bernie Sanders' uh, liberal populism. Yeah. I think that 
there was a general frustration among voters at large with the establishment, as it were, in both parties in Washington, D.C., and I think that Hillary Clinton, uh, for good or ill, fair or unfair, is perceived as a, the very embodiment of the establishment um, as a candidate. And I think that there was no way that she could overcome that, at least to the point that she needed to, to generate the type of enthusiasm that she needed to generate in order to combat a conservative populist like Donald Trump on the other side that yeah. did represent an anti-establishment vote. And that's the second part of the point that I want to make, enthusiasm. We just went over these popular vote numbers. Hillary Clinton is leading in the popular vote, 61 million, 324,000 to 60 million, 526,000. Barack Obama won re-election in 2012 with over 65 million votes. He won his original election in 2008 with 69 million votes. We're talking about 4 million more votes than Hillary received in this election. You know, 5 million more votes than Donald Trump received in this election. And that was Barack's re-election. Barack Obama in 2008 received 9 million more votes than Donald Trump received in okay, this election. Now, These are people who didn't show up for Hillary Clinton that showed up to, for Barack David, Obama. David, uh, it's my understanding, I, I heard someplace that uh, the number of blacks that voted for Barack Obama did not come out this time. I think, yeah, black people, young people, uh, progressive left people, um, anti-centrist Democrats. Uh, Hillary Clinton was not able to get these people to show up to the polls, and I think that that was why she lost. And, and another thing, too, I think I talked to a lot of people in this area that, that were just so frustrated with this whole campaign. Yeah, I don't discuss You know, they, they didn't say whether they voted or not, but I kind of come to the conclusion that they didn't even go vote. Uh, I know mm -hmm. a lot of people who refused to participate yeah. because both candidates to them were so objectionable. Yeah. And, and the numbers speak for themselves. Barack Obama won in 2008 with 9 million more votes than President-elect President Trump is going to go into office with. Yeah. That says something about the enthusiasm of the American people in this yeah. election cycle. Well, uh, if okay, I, yeah, David I, if, or uh, Robert. I have uh, some disagreement with Dave on this word establishment. We have four or five inside groups. We have the Democratic National Committee as an elite group, but it's not established. The only use of the word establishment is the British Constitution. The British have an established religion, and the First Amendment says Congress cannot establish a religion. That means tax-funded, or limit the free exercise thereof. So people who talk about elites as establishment are misinterpreting the language. We have a Republican elite, the National Committee, the National Republican Committee. We have a Democratic elite the Democratic National Committee, we have a Wall Street elite, and we have an oil oligopoly, so there are four elites right there. Then we have Hollywood, and then we have the newspaper elite, and the television right. elite. Now, you, you mentioned all those components, but okay, how would, what would you label, well, I, I think this is what David was referring to. That it's most commonly known as the establishment. That, that I don't. But what, I don't agree with it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what would you label uh, what I we have call in it existence? Indeed. We have a Republican National Committee. Mm -hmm. Those are the insiders. We have a Democratic. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm only leads. using the popular nomenclature. That's, I'm not yeah. trying to define it specifically. Okay. Right. I'm trying to define it in the terms of what the voters are thinking about okay. as they cast their well, ballots. I, 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 per, I accept all of your, I agree that there are these separate groups of control okay. and it takes kind of an educated person to it understand take, it takes somebody like that George, there are George these different Orwell, facets George and it's not Orwell. one collective animal farm homogenous group <laughs> of people. Um, there are different interests, but I think the general uninformed voter 
the conceives of it as an the establishment. The general uninformed voter is political just that, insiders. ignorant. ignorant. <laughs> well, I know that, and you know that, but <laughs> Good. I'm trying to speak in their well, own the, terms. The, and I think that their feeling was that they're they being had gay feelings. Right, they okay, had by feelings. political insiders, okay. and that's what I'm referring uh, okay. to. Perhaps, I, I, general perhaps I should have let David explain that. Uh, he did a much better job than I did in trying to okay. Uh, okay. set that straight. But uh, And I'm quite aware of what the establishment is, too, uh, yeah. other than what is loosely used, uh, that term, okay. uh, uh, right. as establishment. Yeah. Robert, I got a question. Uh, why, do you, why do you think that Hillary Clinton lost? <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, seemed to ignore... Trump's statistics and wasn't watching Trump's campaign at all. She did not get out on the hustings enough. Trump was a more energetic guy who went around to every state. And Hillary was too dependent on television, sitting back. And she's entitled because she's the first woman. And she was running on Obama's coattails. Well, he didn't have many coattails. Right. He was black. Now, what is she, colorblind? <laughs> Doesn't she know? I think that President Obama alluded to the same thing in recent days, yeah. that, yeah. that he attended every yeah. fish, fish fry and every, you know. Right. And she yeah. didn't do that. That right. was, well, the thing was, um, of course, Donald had his own plane, and she, she later did have a plane, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they said that he was getting like three hours of sleep a day, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, and he, he was just here and there and everywhere right. and then back again. Right. Whereas, you know, she didn't uh, turn out as many places. So. Right. And then, if I might add, Hillary lost because the Republican Party is richer and more united than the Democrats, both D and capital D. As Marx believed, under capitalism, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And in the long run, there is going to be, take 20 years probably, a little revival on the part of the educated. Uh, and uh, they will have to reread the works of Karl Marx, in my opinion, or democracy will collapse. As Thomas Jefferson said, Thomas Jefferson said, democracy will not survive if the voters are not educated. Well, if the Republican Party keeps denying funds to the educated, the educated are going to get dumber and dumber. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the blim, grim, grim future. So I'm more sad than angry. Somebody asked me, are you angry? I said, no, I'm sad. I'm sad about the fate of the American Constitution. Okay, Robert, uh, we have reached the halfway point, and okay. if you want to identify uh, yourself. Okay, well, I'm a historian who, uh, by the name of Robert Whaley, retired historian, who says that we have to look at history to see what determines the present. And my favorite presidents are George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Roosevelt, and I don't think Hillary had a good model of what she would like to be as president. And Trump has even a poorer money, a model. He thinks it's Ronald Reagan. I think that he gave Ronald Reagan credit for something he never did. He did not cut taxes. <laughs> and that's going to be the problem of the Trump administration. Will it last two years or will it last four years? Will he be impeached? How is he going to balance the budget, cut taxes, and spend more money on this wall <laughs> and infrastructure? That's the $64 million billion dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, liberal democracy succeeded in the United States from 1870 to LBJ, who won the victory in 1964. Because liberal reform can prevent any social revolution, such as the Russian Revolution of 1917. And it's rather ironic that uh, Hillary uh, Clinton was anti-Russian, but she never explained why she was anti-Russian. The Russians are no longer communists. What is she running on? 
yesterday's news? Mm -hmm. And Hillary lost, according to Juan Cole, professor of Middle East Studies at the University of Michigan, was it the Democratic Party elite, not the establishment, the Democratic Party elite, and Hillary Clinton in particular, had projected herself as being entitled to become the first woman president. And she's been talking about that for 24 years. Yeah. So that's Hillary, in a sense, cut her own throat. <laughs> David, um, can you give some uh, additional factors for why uh, Trump won? Well, I want to touch on something that you pointed out about falling in line, and it kind of relates to what I was talking about earlier with the white evangelicals. Here you have a divorce, a multiple divorcee. You right. have somebody who evinces no real interest in Christianity, and yet you, he had the highest turnout that we've seen among white evangelicals. Talk about falling in line. I mean, <laughs> they, they know what their interests are and they and they're willing to vote for candidates who you know don't emulate their personal moral philosophy at all right uh, simply because he has a republican attached to his name as a party and okay i i think that the republic the democrats are much much it's much more like herding cats i mean there are people right. there were people out there who absolutely refused like refused to participate, refused to vote for Hillary, and actively spoke out against her well past the primary and well into the general election, continued to have people on the left who continued to were hammer her. Were these Sanders supporters that were doing well, this? Well, some of them, but I think most Sanders, I'm not going to blame, I don't blame them. I don't. Right, I'm I, not suggesting you blame anybody. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, yeah, but I, I think most, if you probably polled Sanders supporters, most of them who did vote in the general election probably voted for Hillary Clinton. I don't think that they flocked to third party candidates, but I also think a lot of them didn't vote or undervoted right. in the race. Um, I know just from uh, anecdotal evidence from the newspaper and attending rallies and whatnot at, at Ohio University that there were a lot of people on the progressive left who refused to support or, um, and not only refused to support, but actively uh, vocalized continued disagreement with Hillary Clinton well into no, you know the October and November well into the election so yeah uh, Republicans do know how to fall in line we've seen that over and over again uh, there was talk after their bitter primary campaigns about you know how is that going to work I can only I can only think of a couple Republicans who didn't end up <laughs> coming back into the fold, you know, like Ohio Governor John Kasich. I mean, yeah. by the end, even Lion Ted Cruz, whose father uh, allegedly participated in the JFK assassination, according to Donald Trump, yeah. uh, he was making phone calls for the guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that being united in that level, I think, I, is You mentioned John Kasich. Point. I wanted to add that uh, Donald Trump won 81 of 88 uh, counties in the, in the in Ohio in yeah Ohio. yeah and a few counties like Athens and possibly Oxford uh, Ohio were university towns yeah it, it yeah. surprised me Hamilton even Hamilton County went that way and Cuyahoga they County did. went that way and it was all major city centers yeah so Youngstown the only, the only Mahoning si and Youngstown went, Lucas went and Toledo for, Youngstown went for Hillary didn't it yeah it did that was yeah. the one exception. Mahoning, Lucas with Toledo, yeah. uh, Summit with Akron, Cuyahoga with Cleveland, Franklin with Columbus, Hamilton with Cincinnati, right. and then Athens. Yeah. With right. Athens. Seven counties. Um, but there is one they other... They read the New York Times in those cities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There's a broader aspect about what we've seen in this election, though, that I really think is important to note. It's not just Trump winning the presidency. The Republicans retain control over both houses, both chambers of U.S. Congress. Uh, they maintain a five to four conservative majority. They control all three branches of government, and in addition to controlling all three branches of government, they control 33 of our state governments around these United States. Yeah. That is one state away, 33 is one state away from being able to pass constitutional amendments and call a constitutional convention. They have 
enormous power right now. The Democrats really only have one tool in their toolbox right now to fight against the Republican agenda in any way, and that's the, the filibuster in the Senate. Plus, plus the states. They plus can, the states. You can the recover states. some uh, state representatives and lobbies. The Democratic Party for the next two years is... Uh, is they don't have much, but Republicans almost right. have total power right now. And I just think that's important that's, to point out that it goes yeah. far beyond this presidential victory. The Republican agenda is going to be enacted at all levels, yeah. in all forms. Well, just here, they have the here in the state of Ohio, uh, Ron Portman beat Strickland, Stivers beat Wart Wharton, was yeah. it? Uh, Bill Johnson, I don't know. Bill who. Johnson, Congressman Bill Johnson. Okay, won. and there's a Hoagland. Frank Hoagland beat uh, incumbent Lou Gentile in the state senate. And then locally we had Jay Edwards beat, beat Sarah, Sarah Grace, Grace in the House of Representatives. So yeah, the, in Ohio, Republicans control all of the statewide offices, all of uh, both chambers of the state legislature with super majorities. Okay. And the only statewide elected Democrat is Sherrod Brown, who's going to be targeted in 2018. Yeah. But the you know. The Democrats are going to try really hard in 2018 because if Republicans win, you know, the, the governorship, the attorney general, the treasurer, secretary of state, all those offices are going to be up in 2018. I got uh, one more question here for uh, Robert on uh, if you know, the additional uh, factors for why uh, Trump won. And then I would like to ask something uh, uh, about uh, Reconstruction. Uh, I was talking with Robert earlier that uh, is it Tim Ryan from here in Ohio? Yes, yeah, uh, he's you know, looking. I'm going to do an interview with him for Plunderbund soon Great. about Great. his. Yeah, he'll be Great. seeking a leadership role in the House. Very good, Robert. Uh, additional factors for uh, Trump's victory. Okay, we have to look at the FBI director James Comey exposed Hillary Hillary on her emails two times tilting his so-called neutral role toward Trump. He's got a 10-year appointment, and he cannot be removed, okay, at this point, okay. And I believe that Trump is right on the immigration issue. There's going to have to be a bipartisan re- negotiation on a long-term hearing to rewrite the so-called comprehensive immigration bill. The United States cannot admit everybody who wants to come to the United States. There is a world population crisis. Right. Now, that seems to be a blind spot in both Democratic and Republican thinking. Capitalism cannot continue to grow, and the population cannot be. Climate change, that is the issue that both parties have underplayed. Is the world going to survive? Okay. So, uh... Robert, have you, uh, have you ever been down to the border of any of those uh, four states? Uh, have you been on the border of any... Been uh, the, to El Paso? Uh, or the, no, the Ogales closest or? I have ever been was San Diego. Okay. And uh, what's that, 12 miles from Tijuana? Yeah, well, yeah, you've got the border there, and, and then right. you're right in. You're right in. Yeah, I didn't go Tijuana to Tijuana. Yeah. I had no reason to go there for drink. And there are a lot of people in California who are talking about Mexifornia. Mm -hmm. Mexifornia. Yeah. Is the lower half of the state going to be annexed by Mexican population? Okay. Yeah. I think there's got to be immigrants. Hispanic immigrants is another weakness. Of but you know what? A lot of people don't realize when you're they, they they just think of of Mexicans coming across that border. Right. Uh, that's not the case. Um, there's a lot of people that can't fly to the United States. Right. And what they do is because of maybe the criminal history or something like that, but they can fly to Mexico City. Right. And they can be from any country in the world. Right. And then they just they just come up and across right. the border, uh, you know. So 
that's a concern and um, that's true yeah uh, so Hillary exaggerated the importance of the black voters they're only 13 percent of the population maximum 13 percent so uh, and, and, and it's hard to say. Uh, and then they, I, I don't. I think they, it's a lot less than that that's eligible to vote. Well, I mean, age-wise. Yeah. Or if, half of, if they've got a criminal them, a record, a, they can't. A, they a great presenter. And then what happened on the 8th of uh, November is that it rained. And this is where it, uh, uh, Comey had a, a, uh, a factor. He scares the marginal people from voting. And uh, it was the wishy-washy voter who didn't come to the polls. Well, yeah, I think that's like I was referring to earlier with the enthusiasm. I think having those revelations again in the last 11 right. days of the campaign, right. a lot of people who already weren't very enthousi enthusiastic about Hillary sees all this stuff dredged up again yeah. and thinks, Gee, you know what, like I, I, I really don't, feel comfortable showing up and voting for yeah. her. Yeah. And so they didn't. I think it just See, a lot of vote acted to a lot tamp of down enthusiasm even more. Obama because he was a black man. Right. But they're going to white for a, a, a white woman. No, a white woman true. is not the same as that a black true. man. That's true. <laughs> that's just common that's sense. Very true. <laughs> so then we get back to Hillary spoke in stereotypes rather than the grassroots. And Trump like Lyndon Johnson went around to the grassroots and he had a great talent in traveling around to the 50 states and the voters met somebody who they thought was authentic. He was a liar, but they thought he was authentic because people will vote for Bonham and Bailey or Santa Claus if he sounds <laughs> Authentic. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like that old line that uh, a lie is not the greatest enemy of the truth. The myth is the greatest enemy of the truth. Right. And he was able to establish the myth right. despite his numerous. Um, so Hillary, Hillary spoke lies. in the language which Trump calls politically correct. That is the language of the New York Times, the Washington Post and the establishment press, the establishment newspapers, but not Twitter, not <laughs> Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're not establishment, but they got plenty of publicity. Did, yeah, that, you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. We have so many more avenues right. that we can go down now mm -hmm. than we did in the past. Like, right. Uh, even 2012, I mean, there's more people on Find Twitter and Facebook and all these different things. The, the sad thing, the disturbing thing to me about that, there is, it, talk about the democratization of information, there's almost, there's endless amounts of resources available. Unfortunately, many of those resources are either intentionally or unintentionally wildly inaccurate. Right. They're exactly. Not, they're propaganda exactly. being peddled intentionally to mislead and uninform or misinform oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. In fact, there were stories about uh, Macedonian teenagers <laughs> had found out that if they created fake websites, they could make a lot of money by writing incendiary headlines and sharing them on Facebook and getting clicks. So they would just make stuff up. Anything that, and they found out that Trump voters were the most gullible and they would click on these articles and share them the most and they would get the most ad impressions. So there was this whole business going on in Macedonia of all places yeah. among 17 wow. year olds who are creating stories out of the thin, the thin blue air to mislead people and they're just doing it for bucks but yeah. it does have an impact and you look at if you look on Facebook or on Twitter and you look at the resources that people are sharing you'll see the most insane you know websites they're not legitimate news sources they're not legitimate sources of any kind and um, but people share them people believe them I think there's a, a crushing influx of misinformation from these types of sources out there. Well, perhaps the uh, young ones in uh, Macedonia 
uh, might not even be familiar with uh, the word propaganda, yeah. but they're certainly making use of it. Yeah, and, and they don't really care. They're not ideological. Right. They're out there to make money, and yeah. they just know that writing these types of headlines, <laughs> yeah, getting I, people I, to I, click on I, these I, types I disagree. Of that, the money. Macedonians are well acquainted with propaganda. Because well, they, well we're, talking about, we're talking about teenagers or something like that. It doesn't make any difference. Not necessarily the... Uh, Yugoslavia era, was a communist state, <laughs> and Macedonia was under Tito for many years. Yeah. And Lenin had his propaganda machine, and Tito had his own propaganda machine. So all parties, all states, yeah. all religions use propaganda. Yeah, I just like <laughs> I saw one yesterday. Um, of I, it was the weirdest thing because it was like it was claiming that somehow Hillary Clinton did not win the popular vote, and I started seeing a bunch of Trump supporters sharing this on social media. Oh, the mainstream liberal media is lying to you again. Hillary didn't win the popular vote. And I clicked on this article because I'm fascinated by how people are, gullible people are taken in by this sort of thing. And I wanted to read what their argument was. And it was like, well, the truth is that absentee votes aren't really all counted. They, once they I figure see. out that it's going to go in this direction, they don't count all the absentee votes. That is easily disproved. I mean, you could call John Husted's office right now. Right. And I, do you guys count all your absentee votes? And he'd say, well, yeah, of course we do. And you could call any other state in right. the union and get the same exactly. answer. But this type of thing picks up traction. And all of a sudden, if you are the one who, you know, reads the real newspapers, you're a sucker who's <laughs> being taken in by the liberal media, the, the lamestream media. And, and these people who are believing nonsense, right. perpetrated by right. Macedonian teenagers, right. Are are the ones that know the truth because they've done the research, right. they, and they, it's yeah. absurd. Yeah. It's just absurd. You know, uh, it's like my radio station. Uh, in between uh, music and weather and news and everything like that, they'll just to to fill in the gap. Uh, we just put in a ridiculous statement or something, you know, on there, something to to uh, spark people's attention. And one of them is, uh, I saw it on the internet. It must be true. <laughs> you know? Right. I refuse to look at Facebook. I refuse to look at Twitter. I will accept email because it's a personal vote. Right. It's not, it's not polling. Yeah. See, polling is a lazy man's propaganda. Yeah. You can, you can fix the polls. We've been through that before. Who words the question? Who finances the question? Who publicizes the answers after it's over? <laughs> you can make a... a, a yeah. a okay, Robert, I'm going to go with you. And that was something I wanted to ask was, you know, <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people asking, so probably all read some of the answers, and maybe you've already made up your own minds, but how did the polls get it so wrong? Oh, yeah, well, that's we can have a whole show on that, but... Uh, <laughs> I think we've covered it in part. Gallup used to ask one question just before the election. Who are you going to vote for, Roosevelt or Wilkie? Who are you going to vote for, Roosevelt or Landon? Okay. And even when Truman ran, who are you going to vote for, Truman or Dewey? Now they ask these complex questions. Yeah. They ask four or five questions. Yeah. Uh, and, and that just comes up the polls because people don't know what they're answering. Well, it makes it more difficult to interpret. Yeah, uh, what, are they, what, are know, these, what are they trying to say? Exactly. And we went over those New York Times polls. They asked six different questions. Yeah. Well, they were, the New York Times is part of the problem. They game the polls to make it look like the Times is right and all of the other pulses are wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So they fooled themselves. Yeah, David, how many different <laughs> polls are there that, that were in action at uh, this last campaign? Oh, like if you look at Real Clear Politics, which is an ag it aggregates all the polls together, and you probably got a dozen different ones that they, that they aggregate that they consider and, and legitimate who, enough. Who was they paying attention to? 
I mean, what what were the polling organizations that yeah, they Yeah, that used? they were paying attention to. Well, they would use Gallup, Rasmussen, uh, public policy polling. And uh, Pew, 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 Pew. Pew, yeah. And then, like, major news network ones. So, you know, if the WSJ does a poll. Did you guys Washington compare Post any of those poll, polls? I followed those polls as, you know, Real Clear Politics is kind of a go-to resource for journalists who want to look at polls. Yeah. Because they've got them all there. It's also got a nice aggregate of the daily opinion columns so you can see all of those at once you know, morning edition late edition but the polling thing is where they really do they have it all the senate races all the you know, house races everything available is all right there together so it makes it easy but even there i mean even in the aggregates you could it reflected what they reported on the nightly news and whatnot yeah. um and they all got it wrong um <laughs> i don't know why exactly I think it has to do, yeah, they're outsmarting themselves, probably, overthinking Why and asking they unclear keep questions. They updating them all the time. I remember, like, watching, you know, like, Trump is leading in Florida, you know, 47 to 45 or something like that. In the next hour, yeah. it was Hillary's leading, you know. It's just back and it forth. Slipping, yeah. You know, because the, the Democratic Party has its polling and the Republican Party has a different poll. They're yeah. counting different things. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's true too. <laughs> yeah, but Some of these I'm talking about are... just one one news uh, uh, production, uh, you know, putting that out. You know, yeah, but I'm news not... and editorials are mixed up. Yeah, and people don't know the difference. <laughs> I, I think there, there's going to be <laughs> there's going to be a lot well, of do, uh, do, soul don't searching. Don't you think that Mrs. Pollsters. Clinton was was a, a misled there? Or oh, I'm, I'm sure that her her team apparently was popping bottles on the day of the election, thinking wow. that they were going to win, and then I think they were all. I think everyone was just as shocked as the public, and. Uh, you know, if nothing yeah, she, else, she had planned fireworks. I think. Oh there, yeah, you know, yeah, they had it all stuff. set up there, and yeah, and I think Trump was shocked too. I think everyone was shocked, and if if nothing else, I think you that got, that speaks. Your, uh, I think that speaks to um, partially, at least, to uh, the uh, <laughs> the no this notion that Donald Trump was peddling that everything's rigged and that these elites yeah. have could have total control over everything that happens, I think we can all rest assured now at least that that's not the case. I think yeah. that uh, a lot of them were just as surprised as we are. Now the stock market, it's been going uh, full force uh, since... It's been you know, volatile, it, volatile. It, up, yeah, up it's been up and points down. this week, 20 points next week mm. down. They don't know what they're doing. Well, we've, uh, we, we haven't even got a week in yet. So, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think, the, I think uncertainty is the name of the yeah, game that, right now. That's a good, that's a good word to use. Both uncertainty. in the prospects of what Donald Trump might do as president and what that means yeah, for and our economy. I think the key, and the the key person there country. is Janet Yellen. Yeah. Yes. She's likely to raise the interest rate. Yeah. And that's going to bring a recession. Well, yeah. maybe a depression. Well, <laughs> he brings tariffs down on us, too, that... Oh, well, we that would be a whole other show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be going out and buying a new Ford Mustang anytime soon. So. <laughs> yeah, probably probably a good idea to pad yeah, the old savings off. account yeah. if you can. Yeah. And I did I'd advise investing it into our local credit unions as well instead of yeah. some sort of big bank. But yeah. Well, uh, okay. Uh, who's who's next? Am I on? The yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, get back to uh, the future in this sense, that uh, in the next four years, I hope the Democratic Party is going to review George Orwell's essays, which have exposed newspeak, and predicted that both Britain and the United States would have a new dictatorship and the dictator's name would be Big Brother. We do not yet have Big Brother, but we have two dozen Republicans who would like to be the new propaganda minister and who would like to uh, be uh, what Orwell called the Minister of Truth. Now Orwell's uh, Winston Smith put our TV slogans on, peace is war, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength, and every day for Big Brother. Now, unfortunately, there's a bit of truth there. And unfortunately, Trump and Hillary have ignored two of the most famous Orwell essays. 
Animal Farm, 1946, and 1984, published in 1949. 48. Well, 48 was when he wrote it. Oh, okay. But it was delayed a year. Because I know he reversed the numbers. He yeah. reversed the numbers. Yeah. So it's, it was written in 48, but it was published because of the publi right. publisher's laziness or something. In 1949. That's the copyright. Okay. Thing. Yeah, gotcha. that, that's a kind gotcha. of an accident. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah, there. that's an accident. Everybody. For er Eric reasons. Blair was the author. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, unfortunately, Orwell died as a very young man in 1950. Tuberculosis? TB. And the big losers are neither Trump nor Hillary, but the pollsters and the journalists. All the newspapers predicted that Hillary would win. And we're going to have to have another show on why the pollsters were so okay. um, arrogant. <laughs> I want to give David David one minute to uh, conclude, and then I'll give one minute to Robert. Well, yeah, the newspapers not only predicted that the, uh, Hillary would win, they also endorsed Hillary. Um, yeah, that's right, 100%. Almost all of them. Yeah, I think there was only one. The one, one, was, one endorsement, I yeah, think, the one in that Nevada or somewhere. Was somewhere. So as a professional newspaper man, I just want to thank everyone out there for taking <laughs> our opinion so seriously. Um, we appreciate that consideration. And uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's time to hold on tight. Yep. I, I made a mistake because I listened to Chris Wallace, and Chris Wallace said, but the system is not rigged, and the New York Times said the system is not rigged, and of course they were saying the constitutional system, but rigged, yes, we have plenty of rigging in Chicago, New Orleans, in various cities and states, and a democracy can be sabotaged by capitalism and big money. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. As okay. always, we thanks for debate coming. Debate is the oxygen of democracy. As Let's you keep like it going. Say. Let's keep it we'll going. We'll keep it going. Thank we you for having We have to come me. next week. We have a lot more to say about polls. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Professor.